this is a Briggs & Stratton 21 inch cut blah 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 it's the 500 series E 140 cc so uh, she says it's not running let's just check gas check see there's compression oh yeah plenty of compression let's just try it let's prime it let's prime the hell out of it I'll do like 15 or 20 Well, hell, uh, it's running. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see uh, if there's anything we can do to help it start easier. Okay, I really like these tailgate repairs that I do. Uh, I think, I mean, it runs. So I think I'm going to do an oil change and a drain and fill on the gas tank for her and uh, get any water out. So first thing we need to do is... Uh, it's a little bit grungy. I'm gonna try washing that. Let's take the, the carburetor off. Got a seven millimeter here that fits, you know, pretty good. I say that, doesn't fit that one. Whoa, see if the eight millimeter fits it. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, and one more, a fourth. Should take this off. There'll be a a little vacuum hose type thing right there. So basically, what you have going on is you have two that hold it to the to the carburetor, and then two that mount it to the uh, the bracket. Next step is I'm going to take my little hemostats and uh. This is young enough that the hose is still flexible. I'm just going to pinch that off so I don't get a big spill. And that just slides right off there. Okay, so you can see the, the I'm pinching off the fuel line. I have the carburetor loose. It just pulls right off of the back part there. You'll get a better, better view of that later. So now I'm going to take my pliers. Oops, I'm blocking the whole view. I'm going to take that hose clamp off. And I'm taking the fuel line off the carburetor right now. Oh, God, you can do it. Oh, no. Oh, that thing just... That might be a one-way check valve. That just clamps right there. Let's see. Come on. All right, so no fuel leak. So now, with the carburetor loose, it's gonna leak a little, so I'm gonna block it off. I'm going to bend it around so I can get it off of the uh, throttle mechanism there. I think that's the throttle. No, that's the choke. No, that's the throttle. Doesn't have a choke. So now the carburetor is loose. Oh! <laughs> and, uh, there's two parts here to keep up with. There's an O-ring and a retaining clip. And that's what seals the carburetor to the intake. So I'm just going to leave those there for now. Come back to it later. Alright, so I'm just going to clean this up a bit. It's all nice and dry. Compressed air, brush, carb cleaner. It's all good. So that's clean enough to work with now. Oh, look. A little more. A little more. All right, what I have here is a spaghetti <laughs> sauce jar, and I'm just gonna let the carb drain a little bit before I open it up. Okay, so the carburetor is nice and uh, drained. Let's just inspect the gas that came out of it real quick. So water floats, I mean, <laughs> gas floats on water, right? And this, I don't see anything in it, not a single drop. So that's not really an issue. It might be a little bit cloudy, might be a little bit old, but really that part is in pretty good shape. 
So next step with the carburetor, I got my seven millimeter again. I'm just gonna take these out. There's two that hold the bowl onto the bottom of the carburetor. I'm gonna take a little screwdriver. <laughs> a little screwdriver. I'm just gonna open this up and then it'll pull apart and then we can see the float and the needle and the jets. Set that aside. And there's still some liquid in here. Uh, the, the base of the, of the bowl's contents, I'm gonna pour that in here, try not to spill it. This looks perfect, honestly. good. Looks good to go. The other thing we can do is try to capture the gas from the gas tank and uh, inspect it. To do that I'm going to go back to the 8 millimeter. I'm going to take off the fan shroud. Can't mistake these <laughs> for wh where they go because they have this big uh, spacer on them. And then the fan shroud and the pull cord come right off. And the gas tank, look at this. The gas tank will just slide up. Ooh, yeah. And it's still sealed. And then with this, now we can open up and we'll see how much of this gas we can get in here before it starts to overflow and then we'll check once more see if there's any water down in the bowl or in the spaghetti sauce jar so there's just a tiny little bit I can't quite get out but if there was a substantial amount of water sitting in here uh, it's not there anymore now we need to inspect the gas Ooh, whoa a stick fell out <laughs> Okay, that was something. That was a bit of contamination. The screen looks pretty good. There's a little bit of ickies in there. Uh, I don't know. So I'm looking down in the tube. There's there's a little domed screen that that is the uh, the filter for the fuel. But so this is dry. Long story short, that's dry. I might need to clean that just a little. And again. I don't even see a drop of water. Don't think there's anything wrong there. I say it's time to move on to the carburetor. Uh, these, so these are the jets. So, so the way it works is the gas comes in the inlet and the bowl holds the gas and then you know, the Venturi effect of air going uh, through the carburetor siphons the gas out of the bowl and then it, it it atomizes it and then it goes into the combustion chamber it ignites with a spark blah 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 and then the float controls it regulates the level of gas in the bowl if the float ever goes bad you'll start getting gas uh, you know overflowing out of the carburetor or uh, into the crankcase and, and your oil level will go up real high so so let's look at the jets Pry that up a little, Ooh, and a little a smidge more gas comes out. Looks like there's a little bit of crud there. All right, I can't find the straw for for this, but if can you see inside this little uh, one here? It's got quite a bit of debris and crud in it. I'm just going to clean that up. I'm going to try to shoot a little carb cleaner through this port <laughs> we'll see if it works without the, uh, the straw so I'm just gonna uh -oh. come on oh <laughs> fail okay take two <laughs> a new can of carb cleaner I'm just gonna blast that out so now, see how clean that little uh, 
jet is or whatever that is. And now I'm gonna try to, I'm just gonna match these up and see what happens. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm confident. I'm confident that these jets are good to go. And those will go right back in the carburetor. Um, there, there's no way to put these in backwards. Oh, can you see that? Let's come around in the sun. You see down in there? There's a, there's a, okay, anyways, it, it won't, it won't, it won't go the wrong way. You can only assemble it the right way. And it's as simple as that. The jets are clean now. Everything else is good to go. We'll put this carburetor back together. So another, uh, another thing is there's a little, uh, indention or I guess it's indented on that side little raised area here this it won't go on the wrong way it can only go together one way and the top of the jet sits right in there you have a few types of screws the the ones that go uh, into your carburetor are, are these these longer ones like like that so those are your carb screws So let's tighten these up. We'll be good to go. <laughs> we we might have already been good to go, honestly. All right, so th these are plastic, so you don't have to go crazy. Just a little, just a little tiny bit of torque. That's all you need. Boom. Make sure it's seated well. Oh yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Now I'm gonna strip it out if I keep going. Now this this thing that came out. Um. I think it's a one-way check valve. One-way tell. It's not a perfect one-way check valve, but it does check a little bit. Uh, that just sits right in there. I just knocked that out on an accident. So in theory, the carburetor is good to go. So the next thing you have to do is we're, we're going to recover off the engine right now off the intake, the O-ring, and the retaining clip, right? So let's just, let's just dust that off a little. The O-ring goes in first. And the retaining clip, um, I don't know if it's directional. Hope it's not, because I got confused on what direction it is. See, it snaps right in on top. So you have the retaining ring and the O-ring right there. So now, this is the uh, throttle uh, connection, linkage, whatever you want to call it. You just slide onto it, and then this thing slides there, and then you're gonna just push the carburetor in until it's seated. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna flush this out. I'm thinking I'm just going to take the hemostats and clamp it off again. I'm going to try to put a little bit of fuel back in it. Oops, spilling. Try not to spill. I'm going to do the slosh. Since there's a screen there, you can't uh, get it out of the out of the, uh, the the fuel line. You need to get it out of the top. Let's see if we can dump the trash. Oops, on my hand. That's why I put gloves on. Oh yeah, so now the gas has a whole bunch of crud in it. Very good. I'll do it one more time. And we'll just have a clean fuel tank. Dump, dump, dump. And the fuel tank will just go back in its little spot. Boop. Very nice. Alright, so I need to get the fuel line onto the... Uh, can you see that? Onto the, the carburetor. So I've, I've lifted the carburetor up just a little bit. It's still kind of in its slots. So there's enough room to get the hose on. 
Then I'm going to scoot the car, uh, the, the fuel tank down, push that on, and then with my pliers, whoops, I'm going to put the the hose clamp back into place, and we can lose the hemostat. So this is the crankcase ventilation, and it vents in behind the air filter. So we're going to go ahead and, and we're going to put that inside of there. And then there's little notches on it so it, it won't move its place. And then let's uh, let's start with these little ones. We'll... <laughs> Oops, wrong hole. Again, it's all plastic. Don't over torque it. Now the two bigger ones, there's the eight millimeter. That's actually what holds all the pressure onto the uh, onto the bracket, keeping everything in place. I should have opted to use a power tool. Cordless drill is way stronger than what you need, and it does great as long as you can control it without <laughs> stripping everything out. You can save a lot of a lot of headache that way. Doot, doot, doot. Okay. Now let's see about an oil change. So I've checked and checked. There's no uh, drain plug on this particular mower. So we're gonna have to pour it out of the fill spout to do an oil change. So I'm gonna go ahead and dust it off one more time. So here's the plan. Got my V8 juice bottle. I'm not zoomed in, am I? Oh my God, I'm too close. All right, so here's the plan. Got, got my bottle, got my funnel. This might end terrible, but we'll We'll do our best. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So there's a dipstick. So what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna try, oh no. It's already going bad. Holy shit. There we go. I got a, uh, I guess, <laughs> that much V8 now. You can see, you know, it's, it's real dark, whatever. It is what it is. These are uh, disposable products these days. I'm not seeing a recommended oil, but uh, SE30, that's that's the good stuff. So I did leave the, uh, the, the, uh, the pull cord and, the, and the, the air cover off just to make it a little bit easier to do this. That's kind of a tough angle there. Um, yeah, I'm mixing my SAE 30s, dude. I'm gonna put most of this in there. Cause it was only a partial, uh, partial container. Okay, let's just, See what it looks like there. So that is wet with oil to the lowest mark. I wonder if you're supposed to fill it uh, just dipping it or fill it after screwing it in. I don't actually know. And that's wet to, yeah, so let's put a little bit more in. I think what's left of this will be the perfect amount. Well, one of these is so much thicker than the other. Huh. The Traveler's SE30 is very thin. And the, uh, what's the other one? The Golden State is thick, dude. Weird. Okay. I don't know if we can trust the, uh, the viscosity rating on these cheap oils. Let's see where that got us. Give this a clean wipe. We'll give a dunk. And we're perfect on the dunk. So I'm just gonna call that good enough. Oil changed. So now, uh, what else can I do to help her out? Let's just check the spark plug, yeah. So we got the, uh, the 5 8 cents socket for the smaller spark plugs. 
this on reverse. Ooh, that thing was very loose. So looking at that, it's it's fairly black, kind of wet, uh, but not too bad. It just smells like old gas. I'm gonna spray it off and scrape a little bit of the carbon off. All right, so this all goes against the mantra: if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But uh, you know, this carbon, if it if it builds up too much, it can actually divert the uh, the uh, the spark down and away from the electrode, and you don't get a jump. You just get a uh, uh, you know, it just it just would short out and go right right past it. So I'm just gonna chip off some of this carbon so I can see the the white again make sure it's not built up too much because the spark plug, plug is in great shape you know there's better ways to do this too there are uh, sandblasters uh, like you can get them from Harbor Freight I used to have one but I don't know where it went but it's, it's a little spark plug sandblaster and you can just polish these things up where they look new it's pretty great uh, you know and you just have to to be sure to get all the sand out of here before you you uh, put it back in the engine. Uh, maybe not so important on a lower end lawnmower, but still it's good practice. Try not to to ruin things. Get down in here a little. Okay, kind of OCD there. And then we're gonna. Let's see. Where are we? Uh, so can you see there's a little bit more white, a little bit less carbon on it. It's not perfect, but it'll it'll do. So let's go back in to the engine with it. So spark plugs. You, another thing you don't want to over tighten, but they have a compression uh, uh, washer that you can usually get. So if you're finger tight, you can usually get just a little bit more out of it, compress that compression washer a little bit, and then you're good to go. Go ahead and reconnect that. So let's go ahead and put this back on, make sure the fuel tank is seated. We'll get this back on. You can uh, <laughs> pull the cord if you need to help seat it down. And it's got these three uh, long ones with the spacer built into it. And again, that's the eight millimeter. Beep. Beep. All right, not too tight. Let's just double check that on the spin. Oh, yes, perfecto. Remember, I can do that because there's no gas in it. It's good to go. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started on that air cleaner. All right, what I have here is the old uh, air filter. You can see there's some literal dirt buildup on it. And there's a little bit of oil. It's a sponge, so why not try this? I've never actually done this. I just got warm soap water. Just gonna see if we can get the worst of it out. All right, I think that's good enough. Uh, let's see, that looks better. Let's strain it out best we can. Get as much water out as we can so it'll dry quicker. And then, uh, I call that a pretty good improvement. That looks pretty good. I'd use that again. Uh, let that air dry. And the water, I mean, there's enough oil in there that it cut through all the soap I put in there and got a fair amount of dirt out, so that's good. So the last thing I can think of is uh, the blade. All right, so here's the strategy. I'm gonna use my impact and uh, some of these nuts are uh, reverse threaded. Uh, some of them, you know, ratty tidy, uh, normal threaded and uh, 
you know, so, so you can, you can, you know, if, if, you, if you try one direction and it doesn't work, try the other direction. Another thing is uh, if, this, if this pull cord pulls out that way, that means this thing from the top side spins uh, clockwise. If it spins clockwise, that means it would get tighter with a normal thread. Uh, it, would, it would undo a normal thread. So this might be reverse thread. We'll try that. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pretend this is reverse thread, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna you know uh, uh, hit it in the forward direction, try to take it off. That didn't work. I'll reverse it. If that doesn't work, I'll try again. Yeah. Okay. So for safety, let's uh, unplug the spark plug, and then we're gonna try taking it off. Screw. All right, so condition issues with this blade is, uh, I mean, it's very skinny up here where it gets the most, you know, the fastest speeds are on the outside and it's hitting stuff and it's just wearing thin. You know, both sides, uh, see that. So this is going to come off eventually, but, uh, never seen anyone get hurt by that. It always just goes bing. You just hear a little noise. Uh, and, and then it is super dull. So let's see, let's see if we can do something about it. I got my, my safety goggles and got my hearing protection. All right, so with this blade pretty much being trash anyways, you know, I just, I just took some material off and uh, I gave it a bit of an edge, not much of one. And then I did a quick pass to hone the back. But you can see there's some definite non-sharp spots there. Uh, but, I mean, this needs to be replaced at some point. I think she can go another season. But if she wants to do it sooner, I'll, I'll replace it. But I'm going to go ahead and get it back because she does need to mow her yard. Alright, let's get this blade back on. So there is this thing, which will uh, go like that. And get it to stay. Do this one handed. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a, a wrap a tap. Don't want to over tighten it, that'd be bad. <laughs> okay, so the, uh, the air filter. It's like 99% dry. We'll just stick that back in place. And then the air cover, I brushed it out also. We'll stick that on. I'm going to replace her gas. Uh, I like using ethanol free gas. Uh, there's one gas station that sells it for just, you know, like 50 cents more than, than uh, regular gas. I think the ethanol, uh, I don't think you know, ethanol is bad for for push mowers or any four stroke but I think it's a no bueno for your, your two stroke engines all right the last thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna get rid of this old gas and what I like to do is I, I put it in my car uh, so all the stuff has settled to the bottom I'm just gonna pour it off and kind of try to, to decant the gas and be careful not to shake it up Oh, it's a spiller. Oh no! Right, that's probably all I could do. So hopefully, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully, all the trash is uh is not in the gas tank and it stayed in here. So <laughs> we'll see. All right, let's see if I broke it.
cool. I'm going to go into a mow part of my yard with it to make sure it holds up. No reason it shouldn't, but it sounds good. And for 140 cc's, it's got a lot of cutting power to chop down my overgrown yard. So I call that a success. <laughs>